Hi guys, Devo Kirsten here. Welcome back to another cool video that I've got for you. Today's going to be a little bit different, different than what I would have normally done. I've got the reviews and I've got all those other things and, and I focus quite a bit on landscape photography. But what I also do is I do quite a bit of product stuff. And uh, today I'm going to show you how to photograph a really nice looking watch. Uh, the guys at Phil Yunus uh, Judas were so kind to lend me this uh, Tissot watch. It's a really nice one, and I, I particularly picked this one because it's got lots of shiny bits to it, and, and those are the most difficult things to photograph. So, um, we're here in my studio, I've got, the, got my setup here. I'm going to be shooting on my Canon 60, I've got a Canon 100mm f2.8 IS uh, L macro lens that I'm going to be shooting with because I, I want to get nice and good detail close up stuff uh, with lots of uh, really good image quality. The back there I've got a Canon Speedlight, uh, 430EX2, and I've got another 430EX2 here. Um, Fatix triggers on all of them, then I've got my Ellen Chrome Light uh, with the strip box shooting through uh, a Lee, uh, if I remember correctly, I think this is a three stop diffusion material, just to get the light nice and soft and not that harsh, hard edge light. I've got this watch, it's mounted on its little stand that it comes in the, it goes in the display case. Um, it's got this little uh, wire bendy thing on the inside that, that keeps, it, keeps it in place. It, it, it can be a bit of a mission sometimes. So once that goes in there... Alright, here we go, stand. I want to just get it a little bit more... around for a particular shot in mind. There's some really nice, I've, got, I've, I've already done detailed shots of the face, um, like a normal product type of photo with, with the watch. I want to shoot particularly the detail on this side. There's, there's engraved on the side is the name, it's called Trace. So I want to get a really nice shot of that. But right, before we position it, let's take a little microfiber cloth. And let's just wipe it because these little, these really shiny, smooth surfaces shows up fingerprints in an instant, and that's a real, a really big mission to clean up in Photoshop afterwards. Um, I'm going to be there's going to be a little section in the video, particularly just on the Photoshop part of how I would edit this, in, this, this, this to get to the final image. All right, so let's just have a look. No funny business or anything on there. No fingerprints on the glass or the metal. Alright, so let's get it in position. Okay. Alright, so let's quickly have a look through this camera just to see what it looks like. I'll, I'm just going to be dialing this one into video settings and then just before we start shooting, I'll get it into my photo settings and we. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay, right, so I've got the, the shot sort of lined up. Um, so let's quickly see what we're going to look at a couple of angles, maybe lower the tripod a little bit just to see what we can get here. reflective cards that I'll be using for this. You need to position it in such a way that you don't see that little brace on the inside that keeps it in position. It seems to be a little harder than what I was hoping for. As I'm only going to be shooting the top section of this watch, I'm not really particularly worried what the bottom section looks like. As long as it just stays in place. No. 
quite like that framing. It's a little bit more abstract than what, um, but it's it's all about the name and the detail of the watch there. Because I've got I've got the other ones already. So the way I would see it in a campaign like this is you would want to show nice detail shots, like as if he's looking at his watch for the time. Then look at those small little intricate details that people don't normally notice when they look when they buy these kind of things. Right. So now that I'm happy with the framing of my shot. So now I'm going to switch this camera off, take it into, into photo mode, and then I'll, I'll chat a little bit about those settings. Right, so my settings I've got dialed in at the moment is 1 160th of a second. That's the max sync that I can sync on my Canon 60 with my speed lights and with my studio stroke. So then, you would want as much depth of field as possible. And because you're shooting with quite a long macro type lens, and the subject is really close, we're going to have to really close it down. So at the moment I'm sitting on F20. The studio is providing most of the light. And then obviously with reflective cards and we're going to put the, the speed lights in there on it as well. Um, so your ISO can be pretty low. Because it's going to be for an ad, you would want a really sharp, clean image. No noise, artifacts, anything like that. Um, and generally, I'm not shy to use my eyes on my camera, but for these kind of things, keep it as low as possible. So, I'm sitting at about 200, I'm thinking I might lift that up to about 250. So, alright, let's quickly have a look. Let's look at the test photo I've got here. It's a little bit dark, but that speed light at the back is firing, and that's on channel A. So, let's just turn that one off, and let's just Look straight just at the studio stroke. I get really, the lettering on the side comes out really beautifully. Um, there's a little bit of a white reflection in there. I'll see if I can figure out what that is in a moment. But we'll, we'll look in a moment. Let's just put in some balanced light from the side. We start with the white uh, styrofoam sheet. These are lovely, they're cheaper chips and they work like a job. And immediately I can see the effect it's got on the watch as I bring it in. <coughs> right, so quickly let's have a look. So just holding it, it's going to bounce to that light. The light's going to pass through, hit this, bounce back onto the watch. Immediately, huge, huge difference. I just I light up that face and the lettering beautifully. So right, we we're basically 90% there. So now we know what we what we've got to get the main thing lit up. So now we're just going to be doing um, lighting with the speed lights that accentuates the features and the, and, and the lines of the of the watch. So now we're going to do just just going to do a couple of random shots and just see what pops up, and then we can work with that. I'm not going to worry too much about the style from, I know really where I want that coming into the photo, so let's just see. But for instance, interesting, let's just use a foil covered one. So this is a bright silver aluminum foil. So let's just see what the difference is between the two. I really like to see a lot of light bouncing back on that watch. It's locked into manual focus. Now, I didn't do it right from the start, I should have. Uh, set where I want my focus point to be at this stage. It's right on the black, on the black ring of the, of the, the, the that's around the face of the watch. So, if you if you've got a very high contrast subject shoot, you don't have to set the autofocus. Especially if it's going to be staying um, in the same spot, cameras can be staying in the same spot, so you just keep on hitting that focus point. You don't have to switch to manual manual focus. But in this stage, it just started hunting now a little bit because there's not a lot of contrast in that black ring around the face. So, lock the focus, switch it into manual, so you don't have to worry about that. Now just pressing the button and changing up the lighting. Right, let's get back to the foot. So like I said, I can immediately see a huge difference coming in with the light on the side. So let's just see what happens. Oh, I love that. That's stunning. Immediately it's a completely different look. It's got more feel has got more light, it's got more life to it as well. So I think I'm thinking I'm gonna be going with this for for the final mission. Let's just play around with it and see what else we get. Now 
a due più un F that's also not bad but I really like this one a little bit That's pretty similar to what we got with the with the white card. That's also a really nice one. It's there so we can use it later on. So yeah. again keep it nice and close because you're so focused in on the detail. Uh, that's too much. Too much reflection on the on the, the, the glass. I really like that other one, so I'm I'm thinking I'm going to be using that one. So. Just to always play, helps to play around with more light and see what happens. Just be careful not to touch your subject, touch your tripod so that it moves. The machine we do in composite later, that's where I want it. Definitely got a couple we can we can use there. Really nice clean images. So let's just pop a speed light in and just let's just see what, what, what we get. I'm thinking of creating a little bit of separation underneath underneath the watch on this side. So I'm thinking to bring a light through from the back. So let's just have a look. So this speed light set is set to its very softest light it can give. It's one sixty-fourth of a of full power. Um, so the cycle times will be really quickly. So let's bring that in. This one is on channel B. Yes. So let's quickly have a look. It's creating a bit of separation. You can see it on the on the strap at the back. It's not what I wanted. It's actually not bad as well. With the flare coming in on the side. Could be a possibility to keep and use. That's a bit too much. Alright, let's just up the power a little bit on this. Back into one sixteenth of a full power. It's actually not bad. Um, that's not bad. Quite a bit of clean up on, on that uh, black ring around the face, so let's just do a couple more. The further you move it away, the softer the light gets. So if you hold it close, not changing anything on the settings. Gives a really harsh light um, into the into the image, but if you just hold it the back, it's a lot softer, a lot cleaner. I'm actually liking that quite a bit. So we'll keep that as an option. Maybe just drop in the other face that I shot earlier with the foil into that image. But yeah, something to play around with. Still trying to separate this.
much comfort in here. Let's just quickly have a look and see if we switch on that speed light at the back. Turn this one down. That one's set to channel A, so we're simply going to be switching on channel A on the on the camera. Creating a bit of a bit of a highlight there on the side. To write home about, to be very Here's something I noticed different is the bottom. I was really liking the effect that I got from that from the last one, so let's, let's get a couple more frames of that. Beautiful little texture, just, it just brings in that hint of detail at the bottom of the image. So let's, let's, let's go ahead, let's get more. Be careful not to touch the whole business. Because you can use the modeling light with a very shiny reflective surface, you can see you can see on the actual watch what the light is doing. And we're shooting comp we're gonna we're shooting this to comp it later on in Photoshop, so we might be using a whole bunch of different shots to build up that watch. So the more you've got the better. See what I can sort out is this light on the side. It's just that faint little light in there, so I just want to see what, what that is and figure it out. I'm just gonna see if I can turn if I turn my soft box sideways so it goes along the lines of the of the watch if that makes a difference. Because I had the I had the light vertical, so there was just that little vertical little marking in there that I you know, I didn't particularly like very much. Let's just have a look. It's bigger. Again, okay, what we're seeing: the further away we move the light, I, I shifted the. the the diffusion screen and I shifted the, the, the studio stroke back a little bit to see if, it, if there's a difference. There's a slight difference but again, the further you move it back, the softer the light is going to get. I 
Now I move the, the, the softbox a little bit more towards the back, so the light's going to be falling along the side of the watch. So let's just see what the difference is. Oh yes, problem solved. Let's see what we do if we get to put a dust on in there. Oh, I really love that. Just a subtle hint. So I'm, I'm really liking the way we, we we're still going to be using the, the shot of the face of the watch that we did earlier because I really like that look. But now what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the outside of the watch with this lighting. So let's just get a couple more. Okay, the more light we've got on it, the better. But this is going to be a really nice, moody, really high detail photo. So I think. Um, That's almost the whole photo in one exposure, but we're still going to be using the composition. Oh, that's nice. Okay, right, I think that's it for the, for the shooting part of this image. So, let's go ahead and take it to Photoshop, combine the, the, the exposures and see what we, what, what, what we get there. But I'm, I'm quite excited about this photo now. Um, so, right, let's go to the computer. Okay guys, right, we're in front of the computer. I've loaded up a couple of the images that I quickly scanned through and then I thought will will work for the for the final composite image. So let's quickly go through. I just want to select the final exposures that I really want to use. Um, and then I'm quickly going to show you what I'm going to do with them. So let's just make this big on, on the screen. Now you'll see the edge of the dark band on the, on the, next to the face is pretty sharp and that the wording on the side is sharp. That's what I wanted really sharp. You can still see to show the name um, and all the other lettering in the face of the watch. But that's not the important part. I've got images like that and this is, I want to combine this with the other ones to create one image with a couple of different images in it. To show different details so let's quickly have a look this one it's a little bit too bright on the on the on the face itself <clears throat> this was one of those test shots that that's quite nice that's better you've got a little bit of light coming in on the bottom so this is an option so let's flag that one for now that one's also okay i like that one for the face for the lettering let's flag that one I actually like this one better. So let's just remove that one. I love this image. This one is what I've looked at quickly. I want to use my base image with beautiful light all along the gold section, along the black inlay. The, the lettering is lit up nicely. This is a nice one. This is going to be my, my base image that I'm going to be blending the other ones into. It's a bit too much. Even though there is quite a bit of nice light that I do like, like at the bottom of where the six is on the face, I really like that little glimmer coming in there. So let's mark that one as well. Um, this one is a possibility. Let's mark that one. Uh, too much light in that. Those are the flashes. Too much light again. Nope. 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 nope, not working. This one could work. I, I quite like the edge of the glass, the, the light it's got. So let's flag that one as well. Right, so let's sort this in light through now by the flag. So the, the, there's six images which I'm going to be using to make up the, the final composite. So let's quickly go into the develop module. I'm not going to be tweaking too much to this. So let's just look at my base exposure, which is going to be that one. And, uh, and a touch more brightness, a little bit more contrast, drop the highlights a tad, use the shadows a tad, 
I need some clarity. It's almost good to go right by itself. Um, all right, so let's select all of them. And I'm going to load them all as layers in Photoshop. Okay, as you'll see, Photoshop has now loaded all the layers in two and it chose to stack it any which way it wanted to. But this particular one that I've highlighted on the right is the one that I want to use my base layer that I'm going to be for most of, I'm going to be blending the other images into that one. So what I want to do is I want to move that one right to the top. So there you'll see. It's brought up nicely that this one has lit up the, the, the best from the lot. So now you can turn off the other ones and you won't see an effect that they will cause. So right, let's quickly look what the combined effect of all of these are. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a different blend mode. I'm going to be using the light and blend mode. So what the light and blend mode does it brings in all the lighter parts of all the images below. So you'll see now it's going to cause quite a funky looking thing at the moment. It's actually not that bad to be honest. So there you'll see it brought out all the lighter parts. So now if you turn off individual images you'll see where the effect where the effect is. So that one I'm definitely going to be using at the bottom. This one I might it just oh that one is better so so this image I'm I'm not gonna be using this image at the moment but we'll see so that one okay there goes the face For that particular one, I'm only interested in the letterings, and I'll show you now what I do there. What you'll see, you'll see there's a slight shift On those paintings. So what, what we're going to do first is so highlight all of them that all selected. So you're going to say edit and say auto align layer. So it, it all it always happens. You might touch the camera, it moves off a millimeter and it doesn't align perfectly. So let's just quickly realign all of these images. You'll see on the on the edge of the borders there is a slight shift, so they definitely need to be aligned. So let's quickly have a look. That one is going to stay on, off. There still is a little bit of a shift, so let's just zoom in close. What you can do is you can use the the move tool to shift that layer if you want to. If I'm That is about as good as you're going to get them if you're busy manually realigning them. So as you can see, there's a couple of elements in that image that we can use, but let's let's start with this one. What is the images that are the, the elements I really want to use in this image? It's basically, at the bottom, the section here with the strap, a little bit of the detail there. So. What we're going to do is we click on that layer, we add a mask to it, we invert that mask, so we're going to be seeing, seeing the effect that we're going to be applying. We're going to be choosing B for brush. 
I'm on my Wacom tablet here, so it's got a nice and fine work. Opacity, start low, it's a 40, flow, it's about 65, 70. All right, so let's increase that size a little bit. And we're going to be painting with white, so. We start off with a very subtle effect. I don't want to just blast in a whole bunch of light in there. Now with the flow set a little bit low, so you'll need to go over it, over over it a couple of times to get the full effect of that layer. Let's turn up the opacity a little bit. Let's turn the light on and off. I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. So let's look at the next layer. That's not the one we shifted. Even on this layer we can use it, bring a little bit more detail on our strap. So let's mask this one. We can the invert the mask. Ever so slightly, we're just bringing in that, all that detail there. That's also nice. There we go. So let's just look at the effect. If you can look close, you'll see there's a bit of a shadow on that side. So as soon as you brush that layer, the shadow disappears. Definitely a really cool effect it's got there. Okay, so let's have a look at what the next one does. Well, this one's got that pretty little I'll use the section at the top here, a little bit of light there, and then that small little highlight at the bottom. So let's go ahead and mask that one. Inverted. It's fine. Some adds a little bit of the gold at the top here. See the effect. Definitely a difference there. So this is the one that I moved that I want to use. The basic what I want to use in this one for is for the lettering on the face of the watch. Like the six, those little gold inlays there, the nine, that there, and that one. Not not necessarily on the side, just those little because you can see those are the ones that's standing out. All right, so let's go ahead. We mask that one. 
inverted See, it creates a bit of an halo with the rest of the. Let's just go back. The opacity is set to high, so let's just quickly undo that. Seek opacity right down to twenty five percent. Right, that's better. We just want to subtly increase the light on them. I'm going to switch to a harder brush as well. See, this is why this, it's quite a bit of a trial and error to get to the Done a, done a bit of a rush job there. I need to see what the effect is going to be. So let's quickly turn off and on. Okay, now let's see. Does it make such a big difference in the lettering? Well, it does make a big difference is in the, the hands of the watch. So let's see, mask, invert mask, brush. Right, looks like we're back on track, sorry about that, I just had to sort out my brushes for a second. So, yeah, this is the tricky part, you could always do this with selections as well. It's just going to take you a day and a half to create all the selections. these markers are not 100% sharp so it would have even be more difficult to create selections so let's just have a look at it Right. 
it. It's definitely different. So let's leave it like that. But you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. This is this just took a little bit longer than what I expected because I, I, I did something that messed up my brushes a bit. So let's just see what the last exposure would bring in. Um, maybe a little bit of light in this section over here. Yeah, that's all I would use there. So let's mask it. Come out in the eye. Right, and these, the basic blend of this image is done for now. Right, so I'm pretty happy with the, with the way that came out. So let's just select all of these. And you group them. I would duplicate that group. So now, it's exactly the same now. Open up that group. Merge the layers together. So you've got one layer to work on. You've still got all your, your blended layers there, but there you've got only one layer that you're going to be working on from now on to do your adjustments. So quickly, first let's, let's just crop this image so that everything fits in. There's no white borders. Go. Right, so now I would go ahead and do some contrast adjustments. And for this, I'm going to be using Nick Effects. So let's do Cut Effects. I didn't do too much to do the dynamic contrast. I like the darks and I like the highlights. With the dynamic contrast, it brings out the light in the darks and it darkens the highlights. So Okay, add a filter, Let's go polarization. These are the standard ones I use for 90% of my images. Make the highlight pop, adds a little bit of saturation. In. But. Alright, so there you go. Let's look at before and after. Before and after. Just a little bit of punch. Right, the next one I would do is also Nick Filters. I'm going to the Vaser. And yeah, we'll do a little bit of structure. We just take the structure all the way to the right so you can see what the effect is going to be. It's got this grungy, halo -y effect, it's horrible. So let's bring that down like 13 or 15 percent. I can adjust the sh I would make the shadows even a little bit darker. Just shift down the warmth a tad. It's a little bit more contrasty. Okay, right, let's bring that warmth up. Up again. There we go. Right, I think that's good to go. Okay. Last thing I want to add is I want to add a bit of a vignette to it. So let's just go into Nick Filters again. Go into Analog. I've got really nice vignette settings. Look at these, some of these presets. That's actually not bad to be honest. It's a little bit different. That's also not bad. This one as well. I've got some really cool presets that's built in. But that's, that's not what we're going to be using. We're going to be going classic camera. Um, later, right, there we go. So this will move up. So it doesn't affect the top part of the image. So 
Well, it's got the, the, it's got your eyes completely fixed on that T race, the Tissot, so, the letters, and the, the the hands of the watch. So I quite like that. So let's go ahead and go. Okay. So talking out this section over here, very very nicely. Just that nice subtlety. Really like that. Okay, cool. Now the next thing I would do is I would simply duplicate that layer. I will choose my spot healing brush and I will go to town, clean up all these little funky little marks and scratches and everything. And that will give me my final image. Just going now to speed this up when it comes to the actual tutorial part. Unfortunately, this is one of those tedious processes that needs to be done. This section I'll just try and stamp out here. There's nothing else that really catches my eye. So, there you go. That's your final image. Now, if this was for a client, this is the one that would have gone to them. So now I'll just go ahead and save this as a TIFF file. Busy saving. Go ahead and add in my logos. My personal logo, I'll put that one up there. Make it a little bit bigger, like so. And then the Tissa one. There we go. Bob Shankle, done deal. Now, last thing is size it for web and for screen. Sharpen it. And there you go. Final image to be put up on the web. All right, guys. I I hope you, I could have showed you something that uh, turned out a little bit longer than what it is. I'll do my best to cut it down in the editing. And um, I hope to hear from you soon. Any questions, any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got lots of cool stuff coming um, and hopefully more. If you're a brand, um, a photographic supplier, photographic equipment that would like to get involved with, uh, with, with me and have me review your stuff, please uh, leave me a comment or send me an email. All the details will be in the link below. Thank you guys. Chat soon.